Hey guys, it's Bubs, and I thought for this video I would tell you guys the story about the time I perforated my eardrum and got tinnitus. Those of you guys who don't know, tinnitus is ringing or buzzing in the ears. Tinnitus or tinnitus. Whichever way you want to pronounce it, I've heard it both ways. I've heard doctors say it both ways. I'll tell you guys the story about how I got it, how annoying it is, what it's like to live with it, and everything about it that you might want to know. And I'll also tell you guys my experience about getting eardrum surgery. Basically, July 17th, 2009, <laughs> dating back eight years ago. This was the day after my birthday. Backstory real quick. For my 12th birthday, we went out to dinner and we didn't actually get to celebrate with cake and gifts because my parents had to go somewhere. So the next day, we're like, okay, we're gonna go celebrate Laura's birthday, you know, do her cakes, let her open her little presents. But I got ready that day, I went to take a shower and I came out, you know, in my bathroom. I'm sitting at my desk with my little laptop playing Stardall. Anybody remember Stardall? start all was lit. I have like a few 20, 30 minutes until I have to get ready so we can start going to my dad's work where we're gonna celebrate. I asked my four-year-old brother at the time if he could get me some Q-tips because I've been feeling a little dirty in there sometimes. This little boy comes back with a dozen in each hand and he comes with it. He's like, here you go, ha <laughs> ha. Drops it on the floor, ha <laughs> ha, and walks away. I'm like, really kid? Really? So I pick it up from the floor, I clean whatever I have to do, throw it out, and the rest of them, I'm like, hmm, I don't feel like walking all the way to my mom's room, which is literally right next to mine. <laughs> so I just put it on my desk and I'm like, you know, at a later time, I'll go and I'll put it back in its appropriate place. Biggest mistake of my life. I'm just sitting there on my laptop playing start all. I had like a, a mirror closet on the right side. This was just a few moments later. I see in my peripheral vision, my little brother coming at me with the Q-tip and he stabbed it into my right ear. My reflex wasn't quick enough. You know, I see it in the corner, but then it was just boom, it went in. And what I heard, and the pain. So basically the moment he stabbed me with a Q-tip, the noise, I don't even know how to really describe it. But the pain was immense and it was like, I don't know if any of you guys have ever fainted, <laughs> but I have and that's another story time. If you have, basically the moment like you feel lightheaded and you're about to pass out, you start hearing like a, a muffle and then a, a noise, like a ee. The second it got hit, that's what I experienced. In my whole world I was like, like, what's going on? And I started screaming, my mom comes in. I'm like, mom, I hear something, I hear something. She's like, okay, let's go to the doctor. So as my mom's getting dressed to go to the doctor, I quickly get dressed and I'm sitting in the living room and I'm praying because in my heart, I knew that this wasn't gonna be an easy fix. I knew that this was something serious because not only was the pain so strong, but this noise appeared out of nowhere. The noise that I started to hear was you know the static noise when you when you turn your TV on and it's like that little, that gray with those black and white dots type of screen? That's the noise. And at the time we didn't know he hit my eardrum, we just knew he hit something. And so we end up going to the doctor, my general pediatrician. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she looks into my ear and she's like, I'm gonna have to go see probably an ENT specialist, an ear, nose, and throat specialist on Monday. And this incident that happened was Friday. I literally have to wait the whole weekend until I get to see a doctor who, who can fix me. She's like, yeah, I can refer you to an ENT. For now, just don't take a shower and don't go in the water within those few days. I'm like, okay, fine. After we go to the doctor's office, we end up going to celebrate my birthday. And I just keep telling my parents, like, I hear a noise, guys. Like, I hear a freaking noise. And my dad tells me, oh no, you're just being paranoid. It's all in your head. You really don't hear anything, you're just nervous, you're really anxious, that's just all in your head. I'm like, no guys, like I really do hear something. We end up going to dinner later on that day and I'm just sitting there, I can't eat, all I can think about is this noise. My dad sees me that I'm like suffering and he's like, you know what, Like, let's just take you to the emergency room after dinner. We end up going, the nurse, he comes in and he looks into my eardrum. Like he just bluntly states, you probably have a hole in your eardrum and you're gonna need surgery. And a little 12 year old doesn't want to hear this. I'm gonna need a procedure or a surgery where I'm gonna put a paper in your ear and we're gonna have to sew it in. And he just started talking all this stuff and I just started crying again. I don't even remember what this 
doctor said, but all I could focus on was the noise. And he's like, don't worry, it should go away, hopefully. And the very next day, <laughs> I remember this precisely because this is when the freaking wizards on deck with Hannah Montana, remember that, that, that collab episode? came out, so this was a Saturday. The whole day passed, I still hear the ringing in my ears, and I was so excited to watch it as I'm sitting there and I start watching it. All of a sudden, blood just starts coming down my ear, and I'm like, oh my God, mom, I'm bleeding! Basically, I just kept bleeding and bleeding and bleeding out of my ear. So we wait out Sunday, finally Monday comes, and I see an ENT, he puts the little microscope, whatever, you know, the thing they look at to look into your ears, and he's basically like, I can't see anything. I'm like, what do you mean? Bruh. He's like, you have chunks of blood in your ear canal. It's all dried up. He takes these long freaking tweezers, goes into my eardrum, and starts pulling chunks of little blood from my ear. And as he's putting it on the napkin, I'm just looking, and I'm like, oh my god, all of this was in my ear. And he puts in some eardrops, and he tells me if I can taste it. And I am like, I don't know, yes, no, maybe, I don't know. He's like, well, if you can taste it, that means there is a hole. He's like, basically, do not go into the swimming pool. And if you want to take a shower, make sure you put in some earbuds. Make sure you don't get any water in because you're going to get an infection. He said, let's wait it out and see if your eardrum will close on its own. The first few weeks of when the noise came and I would lay down, it wasn't just a ringing in my ears. It was more so of that plus like a hammer, like a d d d and a saw. Ch 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 so every time I lay down to go to sleep, I would hear sawing noises and hammering noises and the ringing noise and I would just like cry myself to sleep and I'm like no no bubs don't be upset these are the little fairies fixing your ear <laughs> basically how I ended up taking a shower for the next two months is with these little little earbuds they're like little earbuds that you can make in the shape of your ear um and you just stick it in your ear. So basically I put this and I was so paranoid that water was gonna get in. So I would put this, then I would get a band-aid, close my ear like this, then I would get a Ziploc bag, put it and then tie it with a rubber band. Talking about paranoia. See, my dad is all about second opinions. So we went to another like three or four ENTs until we settled on one. I took many hearing tests. I lost like a percentage of my hearing, but all I was concerned about was this ringing. When we settled on ENT, I asked him, how long is this ringing gonna be in my ear? And he said, for some people, it can last forever but hopefully years will go away two to three months. School had already started by then. Two to three months passed, four to six months passed. A whole entire year had passed and the noise was still there. The tinnitus never went away. It was constant 24 seven. From the moment I woke up from the moment I went to sleep. Finally a year had passed and I kept telling my parents like the noise didn't go away. My parents would be like, what, really? It's still there? And I'm like, yeah guys, just because you can't hear it doesn't mean I can't hear it. We ended up going back to my, my ENT specialist. We'd just go periodically like every few months to visit him, but finally we're like listen like the the noise is still there what do i do he looked at it he's like yeah the, the hole isn't closing up on itself because sometimes the drum can close up and form new tissues but it hadn't at this point so he's like we're gonna have to do a little procedure for you and i was like oh my god great and at this point i was 13 my surgery was scheduled for february 4th we had to get there super early like six in the morning i had to do the whole thing take off all of my clothes put on the gown when they put the iv in me put in the anesthesia so i gradually fell asleep within like two minutes and that's when they rolled me to my procedure and basically the procedure lasted 20 minutes if that i don't know how but like through little like tweezer like things they just went into my ear they put a little patch on it that's supposed to like dissolve on itself with some stitches and i woke up and massive massive pain and i took some meds and i was ready to go home that day what was sad about this like particular period of my life was I didn't have many friends. So like, I didn't really have many people to tell. Right after the surgery, when I woke up, I was like, God, please let the noise be gone. And I wake up and the noise is still there. And I was like, oh my God, it didn't work. It didn't work. I mean, obviously it's great that my, my eardrum is now sealed and not perforated anymore. But the tinnitus, the tinnitus was still there. The doctor said, um, I have you know, do a checkup a couple of weeks later. So I go back in, it's been a year and a half and I still hear the noise and he said, the noise is probably going to be permanent for you. He looks in and he takes out the little stitches and says I should be fine and to live my life. But then after that, that was eighth grade at this point. A few years later when I was in high school, my parents really took me to more ENTs and you know they all said the same exact thing is that it's permanent, it won't go away, there's no cure, there's no 
medication for it. Some things that people find relief from like pills or this or that but nothing that like actually takes it away. To this day it's been a, what over eight years now and I still hear the noise. As I'm talking to you I hear the noise. As I'm taking a Spanish test I hear I hear the noise. As I'm laying in bed, I hear the noise. The volume on it is like low. Like out of 100, it's maybe 15, 20%. Especially when I'm very stressed. I know when I'm very stressed is when the noise gets louder. Like when I start to hear it more and more and more, that's when I know. Also when I'm, that special time of month comes along, the noise gets a little bit louder. At night, I can't go to sleep without the AC on. I need some noise to go along on top of it because otherwise I feel like I'm going crazy. I now take a shower normally. I go to the pool normally. I don't like to go underwater still just because like I've been scarred and I've never used a q-tip since the incident <laughs> How do you clean your ears bubs? Well, the doctors make it sound so easy They're like just get a washcloth and put a little water and then just start like moving it around but like I don't know about you, but my ear canals are small and it's hard to get the washcloth in there. So I try to use like a tissue and just like go along with it. But yeah, I would never go deep in and apparently you're not supposed to. <laughs> Makes sense. So I still hear the noise and it does get annoying and frustrating at times. And there have been times where I'm mean, sitting in class and I'm trying to pay attention, but the noise is just so overwhelming. And those are the times where I'm like extra stressed. Where I'd have to leave the room and just go to the bathroom and like calm myself. I still worry about certain things like I don't like going underwater. I don't like concerts because it's so loud. When I do go, I literally am a grandma and I have to wear earbuds. That's the story about the time I perforated or my brother perforated my eardrum and I developed tinnitus. If anyone out there has tinnitus, I understand you and the struggle. Eight years later, here I am. You know, the noise is there and you feel crazy sometimes, but you're okay. So any of you guys experiencing like a ringing noise or had any questions about a ringing noise, I hope I answered them. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our last video up here and subscribe to us down below here. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed and yeah, I'll see you guys soon.